Happy Friday, friends. Uh, I have an odd, very short little parable, if you will. Um, I mean, Jesus calls it a parable, so we'll call it a parable too, it seems fair. Uh, that is kind of odd and open to lots of interpretation because it is so short. Uh, as I've talked to you before, as we've talked about banquets and Samaritans and all these kind of things, right? Let's look to the positive and rather the negative. And so uh, I'm going to share it for you and maybe offer you something to help you be a little bit more optimistic um, in this world uh, for yourself, but also for everyone else. So here we go. This is uh, Luke chapter 13. Then he told this parable, a man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard and he came, looked for the fruit and found none on it. So he said to the gardener, see there for three years, I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be here wasting the soil? And he replied, sir, let it alone for one year more until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. Um, that's it. That's the whole parable. There's this idea of the vineyard. And often in the, the imagery that Jesus uses, the vineyard is a, in, in reference to God's kingdom, right? The, the place that grows the good wine, all that stuff. Um, so this in this kingdom of God, and there is a tree, a fig tree in this vineyard, a fruit tree that's going to grow. And the owner... And you can look at it lots of different ways if you want to say the owner is God and the the, the caretaker is Jesus. Or how, it, it honestly doesn't matter how you phrase it per se. But the idea is that one person says, look, it's not doing what I wanted it to do. It's not providing fruit. So cut it down and burn it. Get rid of it. Now this gardener, which we often associate Jesus with a gardener, right? One who tends the branches, who tends the vines, whatnot. Um says, I hear this. It's not, it's not doing what it was created to do. But instead of just getting rid of it, instead of just pitching it, let's show it some mercy, right? Give it um, some manure. There's a very uh, good song that Lori and I very much like by a group, uh, and I won't use the official language, but th the shorthand would be manure makes the flowers grow. Uh, and it's this idea that sometimes that garbage stuff, right, the things that we think has no value, may be what needs it to thrive. If you do garden, um, and as you well know, uh, I am a lackey for Lori's uh, green thumb, both here at church and also in Oostburg with her very large gardens. Um, if you don't add stuff to amend the soil, compost in our case, uh, we don't go straight manure at our house. Uh, but if you don't use something that has these rich nutrients that seems like it's a waste, you don't get good plants, uh, right? You've got to add those nutrients. You have to pour in goodness sometimes when something seems like it can't bear fruit. So sometimes you have to show mercy on someone who does not deserve it. Sometimes you have to give a second chance to someone who has blown it for three years in a row. Sometimes you have to forgive someone who really does not deserve your forgiveness. Not because they've earned it, but because we have been loved and forgiven and cared for, been given that good manure, even when we have not warranted, deserved it, or even asked for it. And if God can do that for us, who are we to decide for others that they don't deserve a second chance, that they don't deserve mercy? Have a fantastic weekend. We'll talk to you soon.